So good morning and welcome to another fun-filled day of 307. Today we're going to be working together on a couple problems of material balances involving multiple unit operations. So, if we remember from last time, we can consider a system that has multiple unit operations. And based off of those system and the way it works, we can have and develop some pretty complex systems depending on how we wanna have systems input, output, uh, material as it flows in and out of a process. And as such, an important thing to distinguish is our ability to draw boundaries and develop bound balances around these boundaries that we can draw. For example, for this first unit that I have here, I can draw a material balance where I can look at my mass flow rate one, mass flow rate two, mass flow rate three, and I can draw a balance saying mass flow rate one plus mass flow rate two is equal to mass flow rate three. I can also draw a boundary at a mixing point or a branch point, such that if I define mass flow rates like so, I can state, well, mass flow rate three, plus mass flow rate four is equal to mass flow rate five. And you can continue to do this for the rest of the process, identifying what are your inputs, outputs. We can make it as simple or as complex as we like. The key thing is you know, relying on our, our principles for developing material balances. Now I can say material balance five plus material balance six, or flow rates is equal to seven plus eight. And I can also look at the system and draw an overall balance over the entirety of the system. And this allows me to draw, develop a new balance that says my flow rate is in. And this is assuming like once again, steady state, no reactions, very important caveats. And if in those cases, all we're looking at for material balances are outputs equals our inputs. And so for a complex system involving multiple unit operations, as well as mixing and branching points, we can define boundaries around each of those and develop material balances, both overall, like I'm showing here, as well as for components within those systems. So let's take a look at an example and see what we can do with it. Uh, for those that, you know, we're looking on the PowerPoint, uh, this would be the example two that I put up. And it shows a flow chart denoting a steady state process involving two unit operations with a couple mixing and branching points. So the, the first question it asks is how many material balances can be written? So let's take a look at this. So multiple unit operation. Example two. And I'll go ahead and redraw it the best I can. Unit one. And unit one, I have 800 grams per second, and I'm looking at point two A, point eight B. And then I have a mixing point. Which has 200 grams of C per second.
with unit two. having two outputs, 475 grams per second with an unknown A, unknown B, and unknown C, as well as this one having an unknown flow rate in total grams per second, but we're looking at 0.012 grams of A per gram, 0.558 grams of B per gram, and 0 0.430 grams of C per gram. And I'll be consistent. I'll write these as grams per gram. So the first question asks, how many material balances can we write for this process? Well, we have to first figure out how many boxes or boundaries can we develop um, to, to draw balances. So how many boundaries do we see? This isn't rhetorical, I do want input. Somebody want to give me a boundary? There's a boundary around unit one. Okay. Okay. Any, all right, someone else would like to give me a boundary. In the middle where uh, 200 grams comes in. All right, we can develop a boundary here at the mixing point. All right, someone else would like to give me another boundary. Around unit two. Around unit two, great. All right. Is that it, or do we have another? An overall boundary. All right, the overall boundary for the overall balance. All right. And I know, I know this can sometimes feel tedious, but trust me, a lot of times for problems, taking the time to draw these figures, identify these boundaries, really helps you stay organized, right? So from that, I see three boundaries around both unit operations as well as the mixing point, and then the overall. I like to do the overall green just because it really focuses on you know the big picture. So then the question then becomes, for this overall, how many balances can we develop for each of these boundaries? Well, let's start with unit one. Well, for unit one, we're really only looking at two components. Right, so I have two components. in one overall, but the overall and the components are linked. So this is two independent balances. Because if you add the two components together, you get the overall balance. Now for the mixing point, Now we have three components and one overall. So these are three independent balances. And vice versa for both unit two 
we have three components, one overall, and for the overall overall, I'll just write over process. We have three components and one overall balance. And so we have four, three individual balances that are both have two components and three components. And then over the whole process, we can do balances over all three components. So the next question asks, what is the flow rate and composition of M1 as it identi as identified in the process? Oh, I, I missed a point. I, I apologize. I didn't even realize that until I looked again. There's a draw off here, 100 grams of A per second. Not going to really change anything thus far, but it would make, change our answers going forward. Make sure I didn't miss anything else. OK. So it's saying M1's here. So what is the flow rate and composition of M1? So how can I determine the flow rate and composition of M1 based off the figure that I have? Or should I look at in terms of a balance? Am I going to look at unit one, unit two, the mixing point, or the whole process? To find M1, I would do a balance around unit one. Okay, so we can look at a balance around unit one. So we're going to investigate material balances on unit one. So I would, of course, redraw it just to make sure I'm looking at everything properly. So this is M1. My input was 800 grams per second. I had, I think, 0.2 grams of A per gram. Mass fraction, 0.8 grams of B per gram. And I had 100 grams per second of A coming off this stream. So if I look at my overall balance on A, or excuse me, on unit one, I have 800 grams per second equals 100 grams per second plus M1, which tells me M1 must equal 700 grams per second. And so to find the component composition of M1, and here actually I'll put this in green to show that these are calculated values not given. So if I do a component balance, do you guys want to do a component balance on A or B? A. So A component balance on unit one. So I have 800 grams per second times 0.2 grams of A per gram equals 100 grams of A per second plus M1 which is 700 grams per second times 
you know, the unknown grams of A per gram. So 0.2 times 800 is 160 grams per second. So I have 160 grams of A per second equals 100 grams of A per second plus this 700 grams per second times X grams of A per gram or 60 grams of A per second equals 700 grams per second times the X unknown grams of A per gram. So if I do that math, I get 60 over 700, which 0 0.0857 grams of A per gram equals X. So now I have that component composition 0 0.0857 grams of A per gram, which tells me if I do the last balance, B should be 0.91 or three grams of B per gram. Without taking too much time, do you guys see how I was able to get the B balance? Since A and B mole fraction has to equal one, I just subtracted the mass fraction of A from one to get the mass fraction of B. Okay. All right, the second question, now that I have, or at least the last question, the second question was figuring out the flow rate and composition of M1, asked to find the composition of the stream leaving the top of unit two, which in this problem is here. So we have M1, we're good there. I feel like I, sh I should get some more colors. So we're good there. Oh, that looks ugly. You guys have any favorite colors? We can, we can go crazy or we can go not crazy. It's up to you guys. So we got M1, so yay. Um, we need to find this question mark. Well, there's a couple ways we can do it. We can kind of trudge through the whole process, finding, you know, this, you know, mixing point and everything. But we could do a lot more, be a lot more direct if we looked at the overall balance. So let's take a quick look at the overall process balance, and you'll see why here in a second. So let's look at our overall process balance. So the way we can look at this is I can draw kind of like the big rectangle to process and I can say what's going in and what's going out. And it should look like this, right? I see what's crossing my little green line, I've got one, two inputs and three outputs. So for this first input, I have 800 grams per second, 0.2 grams of A per gram, 0.8 grams of B per gram. For this first output, I have 100 grams of A per second. For this input, I have 200 grams of C per second. Make sure I'm right there, and it's 200. And then for this top input, I have 475 grams per second. I have an unknown amount of A, grams A per gram, an unknown amount of B. And then C, the composition will be a function of A and B, so I can write it just one minus X minus Y. For, I think, what was the other output? 
it went too far. Sorry, I have to go back and forth. I have a terrible memory. I don't know what the flow rate is, but I do have the composition, 0 0.012, 0 0.558, and 0 0.430. So this is, we don't know, 0 0.012 grams of A per gram, 0 0.558 grams of B per gram, and 0 0.430 grams of C per gram, All right? So I was able to redraw it, focusing only on the information that I want slash need to know for this process. So what am I going to do next? What do you guys think? Any suggestions? Well, if we look at just an overall balance of this process, We have 800 grams coming in, right? Then we have also another 200 grams coming in from C. We have 100 grams leaving in terms of grams of A. And like I said, I'm not caring about the components. I'm just looking at total mass right now. I'm doing a pure mass balance. And then I have 475 grams leaving, right? And that should equal, I shouldn't call it M1. What do you want to call it? M5, I'll make up a number, right? That should equal that output, right? Because the inputs all have to equal the outputs. And so if I do all the inputs and outputs together, whatever remains has to come out in that final M5 stream. And so I have 800 plus 200, which is 1,000, minus 100, which is 900, minus 475, which tells me M5 should equal what, 425 grams per second. So that tells me that this, should equal 425 grams per second, right? So I, I, can, I, I was able, by looking at that overall process balance, I can ignore all everything kind of happening here. Like, it's like I only wanted M1, so this doesn't matter. And it allowed me to really just focus on what I wanted to know here. I know I'm giving you guys the, the John Madden experience with my play-by-plays here. I want to bring that back. So now that we have that back, we can look at developing component balances over the whole process to find the, mo the composite, excuse me, the mask fractions of in the stream that we want to know. So let's look at doing an A balance on the process. Well, in this first stream, I have 800 grams per second with a mass fraction of 0.2 grams of A per gram. And then leaving, I have 100 grams of A per gram per second. Then, so if I look at this system, that's just C, so I can ignore it because I'm looking at only an A balance right now. 
Then, in this top stream, which is what I want to know, I have 475 grams per second leaving with an unknown amount of A, grams of A per gram. And I also have 425 grams per second with a known ball fraction of A, 0 0.012. 0 0.012 grams of A per gram. So in this, since it's a balance, it should equal zero. So I have 160 grams per second of A minus 100 grams of A per second minus 475 grams per second times the unknown mole fraction I want to know, grams of A per gram, minus 425 times 0 0.012, which is about 5.1 grams of A per gram equals zero. So if I rearrange this, I should end up with 54.9 grams of A per second equals 475 grams per second times X grams of A per gram. Which if I divide that over, doing the 54.9 divided by 475. That should tell me X should equal 0.1156 grams of A per gram is equal to X. All right, so now I have this composition. Oops moved on me. 0.1156 grams of A per gram. All right. So now to do B or C, I just have to do the same thing. Let's do it on C and you'll see why. So C component balance. on the process. All right, so in this stream here, do I have any C? No, I don't, I can ignore it. So what about in this stream, do I have any C? I don't have C there either, I can ignore it. So I have C here, but I know what it is, 200. So I literally just have this 200 grams of C going into the two output streams. So that balance is a lot more simple. So I have 200 grams of C per second minus 475 grams per second times my unknown, which I didn't call it X or Y, we call it Z, grams of C per gram minus 425 grams per second times the mole fraction that we have for it, which was 0.43 grams of C per gram equals zero. So I only have the three terms that I have to worry about. So this is 200 grams of C per second minus 182.75 grams of C per second equals 475 grams per second times this Z. I should probably move this. Make it a little neater. Equals, I have this here, 200 grams per second minus 182.75 grams of C per second equals that top stream and the molar comp, the weight, the mass fraction of C. So 200 minus 182.75 
is 17.25 grams of C per second. And then if I divide that 475, I'm left with my mass fraction of C in that top stream of 0 0.0363. So I can add that into my system and say now this is 0 0.0363 grams of C per gram. And that tells me I can just solve directly for my mass fraction of B in that stream by taking 1 minus 0.1156 minus 0 0.0363. to get the mass fraction of B, or 0 0.8481 grams of B per gram. So I was able to solve for that. I didn't even have to worry about the streams in the middle of my process. I was able to just look at that global process balance and get the information I wanted directly. Any questions on this problem? I know in the beginning it looks really complex, but like I said, if you take the time to draw it, if you take the time to figure out where your boundaries are, where you can do your balances, and like I said, when you start kind of honing in, you can, you know, redraw things, focusing on only what you want to look at. It, these problems become a lot simpler and a lot more, a lot easier to solve. Any questions on that problem? No? All right, well, why don't we take a look at one more problem uh, today. We can look at that um, strange uh, example that I had about the olive oil production. So we see in the production of olive oil, olives containing 13 weight percent oil, blah, 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 blah. Like the whole, there's a big description. You probably can't see it, let me share my screen with the Excel. Um, it says the feed ratio into the extractor is three kilograms hexane for olives. So we're using hexane to extract olive oil, probably not our best practice, but what can we do? And we're looking at the extractors passing through a filter where the majority of the solids was held as a cake. So it's, it's a extraction process using a solvent to get oil out of these olives, pressing them, and having the majority of the oil coming out in the hexane, then flashing the hexane to recycle it back into the process to reduce on the amount of hexane needed for this olive oil extraction procedure. So the first step in this is to draw and label a flow chart for this process. So I'll give you guys a quick minute to keep reading it and then we'll start um, drawing this out. And this one's a little tricky. It's got, it's got a balance on it. All right, so let's let's start working on this one together. So I'm gonna draw another line. Oh, not a black line. So we're looking at olive oil production. So 
So from the description, we see that there's about three different processes in this system or units. We have unit one, and I'll draw it like this, unit two, and unit three. The first unit we're looking at is the extraction process. The second step is our filtration process, where we separate the hexane from that filter cake, and then we have the evaporator, which removes the hexane from the olive oil product. So taking a look again, uh, we can gain information from the problem description. So we see that the olives contain 13 weight percent oil and 87 weight percent solids. So we can feed that into the extractor. So we have 80, 13 weight percent oil, 87 weight percent solids. I'm just going to denote it with an S to make it a lot easier. And the feed ratio into the extractor is three kilograms hexane per kilogram olives. So for now, we can just make a quick note of that, and we will probably use it here in a second. When you're not really sure what to do with those kinds of, I usually just kind of put it to the side, you know, around the extractor. I'm just going to say three to one hexane to olive into extractors. And then we're seeing the extractor effluent passing through a filter where we have a filter cake being withheld and our hexane olive oil mixture going on into the evaporator. So we have this system. So we have some kind of filter cake Man, my handwriting's really bad today. I apologize. Filter cake. What else would I want to call the other? So this is the extractor effluent. And then the filter cake comes off and then we have our hexane and oil where we have the evaporator separating our oil and we have a hexane recycle. So this is gonna be our hexane recycle. And I'll make it a little neater. And that's gonna be put back into the process, the extraction process. So now we have hexane kind of on a loop. We have our olives coming in, our effluent, the filtration, which separates the filter cake from the oil and hexane, the evaporator separating our hexane with from our predominant olive oil. So the filter cake is, contains 75 weight percent solids. So for that cake, I can say we have 75 weight percent S, an unknown weight percent of oil, and a one minus X minus points, I should say just 0.25 minus X. 
weight percent of hexane. So, you know, slowly building this flow chart, looking through the problem description, trying to add that detail as you read through it, you know, looking through it, make sure there's nothing missing and that everything is represented uh, properly. And so in addition to drawing and labeling the flow chart, it's asking to perform a degree of freedom analysis and calculating the yield of olive oil, the required fresh hexane feed and the recycle to fresh feed ratio. So through that, that tells me that there's a fresh hexane feed being put into this process. So we have to include that in the flowchart. So there's, there's a couple ways we can do that. What I can do here is I can create a mixing point here. Uh, I'll put it a little bit this way. So that this hexane recycle can meet up with fresh hexane. Right, because you're going to be losing a little bit of hexane in this cake and possibly in the olive oil. I hope not in the olive oil. Let's let's hope that it's predominantly olive oil and there's no hexane in what we buy, but who knows. So is there anything else that I missed that you guys can point out? So one of the things that we can look at um, at this point is you can start kind of trying to label things um, further. Um, you can, we can draw our boundaries around our unit operations and our mixing points. That's another good thing that we can look at. And like I said, this probably is a little messier than I like, but you know, organizing this as much as possible really helps, right? So I can draw boundaries around each of my processes. And I do have one mixing point, which is where this fresh hexane meets with the recycle. And then of course, I've got my overall balance here. Right. All right. So let's look at the next step and ask to perform a degree of freedom analysis. This, this is where it can get a little tricky because since we have three unit operations, one mixing point and one overall for the whole process, we can do a degree of freedom analysis for each of those, the subunit as well as the overall process. For a problem like this, I would probably strongly recommend taking a basis. So, before I kind of jump into that, I'm going to take a look at taking a basis for this. And I'm going to say, I'm going to feed in 100 kilograms of olives. Okay. 
So let's look at doing a degree of freedom analysis on the extractor. So with my basis, I can have a lot of things specified on that extraction unit. My primarily unknowns for this are the flow rates and compositions of the stream leaving the extractor. Because remember, we had this three to one hexane to olive oil, olives into the extractor. So if I take a basis of 100 kilograms of olives entering the extraction unit, that tells me from that basis that I have 300 kilograms of hexane entering the extractor, right? So the only information that I don't have, that's really ugly, let me clean that up, kilograms. I, I promise I'm trying not to use hieroglyphics. So the only information I don't know is this flow rate here, I'm going to call it M2. So I don't know the composition of the flow rate of M2. So my unknowns are M2 and the compositions. Well, I have three components, right? So I have X for my olives, or excuse me, my oil. And if Y is my solids, and I'll do this in weight percent. Then my hexane is going to just be 1 minus x minus y. So that's just really two unknowns. So an x and a y. So I have three unknowns there. But I have three components. So I can develop three balances on that. Right, so that tells me my degree of freedom from my extractor is going to be my balance minus my unknowns, and my degrees of freedom on the extractor is zero. What? Where should we look at in terms of degree of freedom next? Where would you guys like to look? I'll let you vote or give me an idea. I'm thinking the mix with hexane. The mixing point? Yes, sir. Okay. We can take a look at that mixing point. So for the mixing point, and just to kind of refresh your memory, the way it, we have it here is this is the recycle, this is the fresh feed, and this is going into the extractor, right? And we already said, based on our basis, this is 300 kilograms hexane. What we don't know is the actual flow rates, right? I'm gonna, what do you want me to call this one? M, we'll call it M3 and M4. We don't know those. So we have two unknowns, which is our flow rates M3 and M4. And since both of those streams are pure hexane, as well as what it comes out as, there's one component. which is hexane. So our degree of freedom analysis tells us that we have one component, or excuse me, two unknowns and one component. So our degree of freedom is one. So as of right now, we can't solve that mixing point. Let's take a look at another spot. Um, 
we can look at the filtration start part now. The filtration areas is probably the, the worst point. Right, because we have our filtration unit. And we have, this is M2. We got this cake stream, which I'll call M6. This can be M5. We really don't know any of these flow rates or their compositions. And so it creates a pretty big mess. Oh, we know some of them actually. I'll, I, I stand corrected. We know the cake is 75 weight percent solids. I think that's about it. So in terms of M2, so our unknowns, we don't know M2. We know M2 is going to be a mixture of the solids, the oil, and the hexane. Correct. So for M2, I can write it out and say, okay, there's an X weight percent oil, Y weight percent. Or I want to make sure I'm being consistent. Okay, I am. I don't want to confuse anybody. Solids. And then the hexane is just going to be that 1 minus X minus Y. I'm going to call these X2s, Y2, because they're in stream 2. So since the hexane's dependent on the X and Y, these are going to be unknowns that are independent. In terms of the cake unit, I know it's 75 weight percent solids. It's an unknown weight percent of oil. And once the hexane is going to be 0.25 minus that X. So that's not independent. So I've got this X6 as an unknown. And then for M5, I have oil and hexane, but no solids. I'm going to assume that filtration unit is going to take care of all the solids. So I have an X number weight percent of oil and a 1 minus X5 weight percent of hexane. So looking at that up, I have, I don't know what M6 is. I forgot to put that in. And I also don't know M5 or X5. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven unknowns. So that's a lot of unknowns. So the question is, what else do I know? Well, I have three components, right? So I can write three component balances. And I have I have one more thing, an oil to hexane ratio, I believe, for the system. Mm 
you look back at the problem statement and see? It said it had the same ratio, leaving the filter as the reactor. Which makes sense, right? So I have that one-to-one -one ratio. So I have same oil to hexane ratio in M2 and M5. So I have that ratio. So for the degrees of freedom there, I have seven unknowns, three components, and that information regarding the ratio, which I can write algebraically. So I have three degrees of freedom. So that tells me that's probably going to be the last part of this problem that I want to solve. All right, I have two areas left. I have the evaporator and the overall balance. So let's take a look at the evaporator. So the evaporator has M5, and I said it was X5 weight percent oil, one minus X5 weight percent hexane. Ugh. And then I have this recycle and the oil product call M7. And I don't know if I named that recycle in terms of giving it a number. I did not. No, I gave it, I put it M4 up here. So I'll call it M4. Well, I know if I'm going to assume my product is pure oil, so there's going to be no hexane here. And there's going to be no oil here. It's going to be a nice, perfect flash component separator. So that kind of makes things a little easier in that I don't have two components in my M7 and M4 streams. But I still have to ask myself, what are the things I don't know? Well, currently, I really have about four unknowns. which would be the M5, X5, M4, M7. I do have two components in this, these area, which tells me my degrees of freedom is gonna be four minus two or two. So once again, probably not where I'm gonna to wanna to start. And then the last place I have to look is my overall balance, which now I'm looking globally. So I got to go take a big quick look at my first figure and ask myself, what are my inputs? And what are my outputs, right? So if I'm looking globally as a process, I'm putting in olives and fresh hexane, and I'm getting out my filter cake and my olive oil product. So I have my M3, my 100 kilograms that I put in, which is what, 13% oil, 87% solids, and then I've got my cake and my olive oil product, which this I'm pretty sure was M7. This is my olive oil product. And my filter cake, what did I call my filter cake? M6. 
which was my filter kick, which was 75 weight percent solids, some unknown weight percent of oil, and some also unknown weight percent of hexane. So how many unknowns do I have for my overall balance? Who can tell Three. me and name them? Three. Close, we actually have four. We, have, we don't know how much fresh feed we have. We don't know anything about M7 flow rate or the M6 flow rate. And we don't know that weight percent of oil, that X6. We'll call it the process. All right, and we got three components, so we can do three component balances. which tells me my degree of freedom here is four minus three or one, right? So I was able to look, draw my process. We just finished doing the degrees of freedom. So let's take a look. Our process has one degree of freedom. The evaporator has two. The filtration unit has three. The mixing point has one. And the extractor has zero degrees of freedom. Right, so what I'm probably gonna look at is say, where am I gonna start? Well, my extractor has zero degrees of freedom. So I'm probably going to solve my extraction unit. Because what can I get from my extraction unit? Well, I can get everything I need to know for M2. So if I solve that, I can get M2, X2, and Y2, right? So that removes those three unknowns, which means if those three are solved for, I can then reduce the degrees of freedom in my filtration unit down to zero, which allows me to then get X2, M6, M5, and X5. Once I have that, then I can go to my evaporator and solve my evaporator because I'll have M5 and X5. And then instead of having two degrees of freedom, I'll have zero. So I can solve for my recycle flow rate and my olive oil output. Then once I do that, I can have everything. I can go to my overall balance and solve for my fresh feed flow rate. And once I have that, I can solve it and answer any of the questions that have been posed. So you see how looking at this complex process, right? There's three units and a mixing point. We took the time, we drew the problem, we identified the boundaries. We looked at each boundary and, and did a degree of freedom analysis. Asked ourselves, what information do we have? And what are the unknowns? Where are the degrees of freedom? Once we did that, we can then look at this and say, okay, let's start at the zero. What does that give us? All right, now I have this information. Where would I go from here, right? So now I've developed a strategy for finding all the unknowns and getting everything specified so that I could then answer the questions that I've posed in the problem statement, right? So for this one, you'd look at the extraction unit first, then the filtration unit, then the evaporator, and finally the overall balance. And then with all that information, you can then determine the yield, the required hexane feed, as well as the recycle to fresh feed ratio. Any questions on that? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm not gonna solve it, but I gave you guys the steps and the method. So go ahead and after class when you're in your spare time, when you're doing some homework and studying, see if you can finish up this problem. And you can come talk to me, send me an email, and I'll let you know how well you did. But I think it's good practice. But hopefully from this, you can see the importance of taking the time to break down these complex problems and kind of look at things piece by piece.
Do you guys have any questions? So on the filtration system, you have 0.25 minus X. And when you did your degree of freedom, you didn't count that as an unknown? No. Because it's still a function of just that one unknown X, X6. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. Um, don't forget, you do have homework due tonight at midnight, so make sure you get it in, okay? If not, take care, have a great rest of your day, and I will see you guys tomorrow.